Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills, maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step -step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. With all of that said, feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So let's get to the good stuff. Hi everyone, and welcome back to part two of our cap sew along series. Today we are going to actually start prepping the pieces of our cap before we assemble them in part three. So go ahead and grab your ruffles, your call, and your band, whichever one you decided to cut out, and let's get started. Now for my cap, I'm gonna be using a combination of silk threads and linen threads. I am stitching on cotton muslin, it's a very fine fabric, so I could also use a cotton thread if I wanted to. Um, I'm just using the silk and the linen because they're what I already have here in my sewing kit and I don't have to go get anything else. Um, if you're stitching on linen, of course, we would recommend using linen thread for those. Um, keeping in mind when you're working with cottons, we don't necessarily have the same variety of qualities of threads today as were available in the 18th century. And so sometimes we have to make substitutions uh, for the right weight of thread for our fabric. And that's just something that we have to deal with in the modern industry. Let's start with ruffles. So if you have two pieces for your ruffle, or even if you have two pieces for your band, there are a couple of ways that you can put these pieces together before we prepare to stitch them. The first method to do this is going to happen before we hem the ruffle, and that would be to actually do a really tiny felled seam. So you could offset that. We could just stitch back stitch or space back stitch right along this edge, flip those over, fold that raw edge under, just like we did with our shifts in the shift sew along, or actually the same thing that we did on the bed gown sew along on that side seam for the unlined bed gown. If you're going to fell it, you wanna fell it now, and then you'll go ahead and hem your ruffle. The second option is to actually hem our ruffle pieces first, and then we'll attach them after they've been hemmed. And because we've already done felling in other sew-alongs with you guys, we're gonna go ahead and use this method today so we can kind of broaden your um, historical toolkit. The first thing that we need to do is we need to hem both of these pieces. Not only are there multiple ways to piece your pieces together, but there are also multiple ways to hem. So you can certainly do a rolled hem on your ruffle. And if you're gonna do a rolled hem, I would recommend checking out our tutorial on rolled hems here on our YouTube channel. That's a great place to start. I'm not gonna demonstrate a rolled hem today because you can look at that tutorial to do that. What I'm gonna show you today is actually another method to get really fine hems that we see a lot on extant caps. This method also works really well when you are piecing cap components together, which is why I'm gonna use it today because not only am I piecing my ruffle, but I am also piecing my cap band. If you're pleating your ruffle, you're gonna to wanna to hem your ruffle strip on all four sides. If, however, you are gathering your ruffle down to your call, you are only going to want to hem your ruffle on one long side and the two short sides. That's because when we go to gather the ruffle down, we're actually gonna use a rolled whip gather, which will finish the edge and gather the fabric all in one step. So it's a little more convenient and it eliminates the need to hem that fourth side. I'm gonna take the shorter of my two strips. My strips are a little uneven to get the 60 inches. That's fine. It doesn't have to be exactly 30 and 30 inches. Mine is somewhere around say 37 inches and then I've made up for the rest of it in my other strip. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a narrow fold on our fabric. You can just finger press this. It doesn't have to be anything super special fancy. Okay. 
Once you've made that fold, we're gonna go ahead and baste that fold down. You know how I feel about basting. Now, a lot of you in our live were asking about needle choices. I can share my personal preferences. Uh, when I'm doing things like basting or rolled whip gathering, I like to use longer needles. So I have a little bit of a longer needle here. When I hem, I like to use shorter, smaller needles. So you'll probably see me switch needles occasionally, and that's probably why. So once this is folded, I'm gonna go ahead and baste. So you can see with that longer needle, I'm able to pick up a couple of stitches at once when I'm using longer stitches for basting, and that's one of the reasons why I like it. Now, because I am going to gather my ruffle down to my band, I'm only going to finish folding the short edges of my ruffle. I'm gonna leave the long edge raw. Remember, if you are pleating your ruffle to your band, you're gonna go ahead and fold the whole way around, but I'm gathering, so I'm not gonna go the whole way. I'm only gonna go on those three sides. So now to get that really tiny hem that we want on our caps, if you are not rolling your hem, we're gonna take that folded edge that we've basted and we're going to essentially fold it on itself. So we're not just folding it over again because that would be a really thick hem. We're going to fold it almost halfway on itself. A little over that because we do want to cover the raw edge. We don't want frayed fit sticking out. But by folding that basted edge, you can see we get that really nice narrow hem. And it's really nice and flat too. So once this is folded, we're gonna go ahead and hem this down. And I'm just gonna use a pretty typical hem stitch for this. want to keep these stitches kind of as nice and even as you can. There's a reason we saved the cap is kind of the culmination of all of your hard work over the last couple of months through all of these sew alongs is uh, your shift kind of gave you a lot of practice at getting an even hand hopefully and your cap is going to give you kind of a nice place to apply that evenness and work on creating really fine stitching if you can. And if you don't do it as nicely as you want to on this one I guess you'll just have to make another one. Bummer. Good thing there are two different caps in that pattern. All right, so when you get to the corner, you just wanna to try to neatly make that turn. Sometimes I use my needle to help with that. Honestly, it's just fiddly work sometimes. And we're just gonna continue hemming however much you need to hem. So again, three sides if you're gathering, four sides if you're pleating. All right, once your ruffles are hemmed, we're gonna go ahead and stitch them together. So to do that, we're going to take those hemmed edges of the ruffles on that short end. We're gonna put them right next to each other like you see here. And then we're gonna take some thread and honestly, all we're going to do is we're going to whip them together. Be 
careful to catch just the top edge of the fold of both of those. You don't want to go too deep on that stitch because we're going to open this up in just a minute. Alright, once that stitching is done, we can go ahead and open this up. You have a nice flat seam. And one long piece of ruffle. Once your ruffle is done, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with our cap band. If your band is in two pieces like mine is, go ahead and fold, baste, fold that in half and hem, just like we did on our ruffle. If your cap band is in one solid piece, I would recommend just using the folding and basting method to hem around all edges. So once our ruffle is hemmed and the band is hemmed, we're ready to move on to the call. The first thing that we're gonna do with the call is put in our eyelets for the casing. And on your pattern, there actually is a marking to show you where to put that eyelet in. So what you can do is hold your pattern piece to your fabric. You can mark that with a very fine pencil mark, a chalk mark, or if you want to be really gutsy, you can just, you guessed it, eyeball it. You just want those eyelets to be on either side of center. So friends, it's a sad day and I can't find a pencil in the studio, so I'm going to live dangerously. I don't recommend using a pen to mark this, but I'm going to. I'm going to make it a very light mark just to give me a reference point. Wish me luck. Let's pretend that never happened. All right, so I have two very faint marks marking my eyelet. Once you have your eyelets marked, go ahead and grab an awl. This awl does not need to be super heavy duty, especially if you're working on really lightweight fabric. In fact, an awl that is too heavy duty might actually hurt your fabric by opening it up too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my all through my fabric, being careful not to break the threads. And I like to work it back and forth both ways. I find that it opens it up a little more. are pretty well intact so I haven't broken anything yet. If you break one or two threads that's okay um, but you don't want to break all of the threads. Part of what makes eyelet so much stronger than say something like a metal grommet is the fact that it's preserving the threads of the warp and the weft and we're just pulling them apart rather than cutting them. On a cap that may not seem like such a big deal but when you get to things like stays, it becomes a lot more important. 
So once your eyelet is open enough that you're going to be able to comfortably get your uh, casing string through, which should be a pretty small uh, either piece of tape or cording, then we're gonna go ahead and stitch the eyelet open. Now I'm just gonna stitch this pretty quickly. I'll show you a little bit of me stitching it, but if you've never stitched an eyelet before, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you watch our eyelet tutorial, which we have linked in the description below, because that's a whole lesson unto itself. I would practice a few times before you do it on your cap, and it's probably not a bad idea if you have some scrap fabric from your cap to practice a couple of eyelets on that fabric before you work them in your cap itself. A little practice goes a long way. Resist the urge to overstitch your eyelets, by the way. They don't need to be completely encased. It just needs to be enough stitching to hold those threads open. You can see this eyelet is not incredibly overstitched. It is stitched just enough to hold it open, and that's it. So now we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the second eyelet. All right, once our eyelets are done, we are going to go ahead and move on to the casing. Now you have some fold lines for the casing here on your pattern, but this doesn't need to be exact. The important thing here is to end up with your eyelets on the inside back of your cap. So. While you certainly could stick exactly to the pattern as it is on your paper, if your eyelets got a little bit off in your stitching, what you'll do is just fold the bottom up to just underneath your eyelets, just like you see there. Continue that fold across the bottom And you can baste this if it helps you or give it just a quick press with the iron. And once you've got it folded the first time, go ahead and fold it up the second time. And that should put your eyelets kind of right in the middle of the back on the inside. And it should leave you with a casing. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and hem our casing down. Where is my needle? Oh, okay. There. <laughs> We have hemmed our casing down, we have our eyelets in our call, we have hemmed our ruffles, remember you're hemming three edges of the ruffle, one long edge, two short edges if you are going to gather your ruffle down. You're hemming all four edges of your ruffle if you're pleating it to your band. We have hemmed our band on all edges as well and we have pieced together any of our pieces that needed it. 
That was a lot of hemming. So I think we're going to stop there for today. And if you join us next week, we will finish up this cap. So we will deal with uh, the rest of the call and putting everything together. Yay! Friends, thank you so much for joining us today. And as always, remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So that way you'll get a notification when our third So Along premieres, wherein we put this cap together. In the meantime, you've got a lot of hemming to do and I have a cap to finish. So we'll see you next time.